Good evening everyone and welcome to another episode of On The Sofa. I'm Amy and I work in our marketing department and joining me today is Emily to chat about all things Clan Cameron, our Clan of the Month for October. Hi there, I'm Emily, I'm also part of the marketing team and yeah, excited to learn more about Clan Cameron. So let's get into it. There are over 500 clan and family associations registered around the world and we love learning new bits of history and hearing from our customers about how they explored their heritage and traced their roots. We are by no means experts, just keen to share information. We love digging into the often bloody and brutal stories, highlighting the lesser known bits of Scottish clan history and the work of the clan societies around the world. So don't hesitate to chip in if we get anything wrong or you have more to add. Throughout October, we've been celebrating all things Clan Cameron. So join us as we delve into this clan's history and discover some of their most intriguing stories and learn about what the clan has been up to in recent years. We'll also be learning about some of the most memorable battles, famous faces, old and new, and so much more. We always welcome your input, so if you're associated with the clan in any way and you have stories to share, don't hesitate to get in touch and let us know in the comments. The first being that the first chief of the clan was a descendant of the Magalones, or from the medieval Cameron family of Balgarno in Fife. The second belief is that the name comes from the old name Camshron, meaning crooked nose, which feels a rather personal personal insult to the chief at the time. <laughs> I saw a few people mention that in the comments when we uh, announced Clan Cameras or Clan of the Month. Straight away, they we talked about the crooked nose. So well, there you go. Maybe it's stuck. Yeah. The last theory is that the clan's folk are descended from King Camcron, a king of Denmark. Oh, exciting. Um... Either way, we do know who the first clan of the chief is. Donald Dew created the clan when he married an heiress of the McMartins of Letterfinney. He went on to be one of the strongest leaders in the Highlands, unifying all the nearby tribes and creating Clan Cameron. The clans of Lochiel were later unified by charter into the barony of Lochiel in the 16th century by Ewan McAllen. The original Clan Cameron territories surrounded Lochiel near the present-day town of Fort William. Within the Cameron County of La Cabre lies the largest mountain in the British Isles, Ben Nevis. Oh, wow. oh okay. cool. Well, didn't know you were in Cameron County if you head up Ben Nevis. So, didn't know that, no. Yes, if you're looking for a physical challenge, you know where to go. Yeah. Maybe that could be the record. How many Camerons could... Can we get to climb up Ben Nevis? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Today, the seat of the Cameron clan is the ancestral Ancurry Castle built in the 16th century by Ewan, uh, Owen McAllen Cameron, 13th Chief of Clan Cameron. We will get into all of that later on. Now, back to the early history of the clan. Elan Nan Crow is one of the earliest known settlements used by the chiefs of Cameron before moving up to Tor Castle. It is believed that this is where the Camerons of Lochiel take their name, as the island is located in the Narrows at the entrance to Lochiel. This was later home to the captains of the Cameron clan during their war with the Macintoshes and the Chattans. Ooh, battle starting now. <laughs> uh, so in September 1396, this war came to Perthshire with Clan Cameron facing Clan Chatton at the Battle of North Inch with murderous intent. Mm. Uh, for years, these two clans had been in a dispute that seems to have no resolve until Robert the Bruce III stepped in. He stated that they had either to resolve their feud or bring 30 soldiers each to Perth for trial by combat. Wow. Sounds like a big gladiator battle. It that. does, doesn't it? <laughs> so the men decided to fight to the death. Ooh. <laughs> uh, barriers were erected to stop spectators encroaching on the battlefield and King Robert III took up his position on a platform from which the combat could easily be seen. Yes, very Game of Thrones. It is, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, as if this sounds like quite the event. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I will leave the summing up of this battle to the famed Sir Walter Scott. Blood flowed fast and the groans of those um, who fell began to mingle with the cries of those who fought. Sadly, this was not a victorious day for the Camerons as all but one of the 30 soldiers were killed. Um, this did not end this feud as it continued for the next 150 years. 
Whoa. So to lose uh, 29 of your 30 soldiers and it still is going for 150 years. Yeah, that is crazy, I mean, it may it? be entertaining, but I'm really not sure it was worth it. Maybe entertaining now, not at the time. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. There is little written history about Eileen Nan Crow and Tor Castle after the Battle of North Inch and the next battle with the opposing clan at the massacre of Pam Sunday. In 1412, all members of Clan Cameron arrived at their local church for a day of prayer, but their neighbouring enemies had a differing idea. The Clan Chatton Confederation, including Clan Mackintosh, attacked Clan Cameron and set fire to the church. Whoa. The battle that followed was filled with obstinacy and fury to the point that most of the Mackintoshes and almost the whole tribe of Camerons were cut to pieces. You must be asking yourself what the Camerons had done to deserve such a brutal death. They stole cattle. Oh, I mean, that seems seem to be very brutal. Well, cattle. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cattle raids went on back in the day. There but, was, yeah. yeah. Hmm. After the events of this battle, there is little known about the castle and the people that occupied it. Wow, what a story. I know. Um, well, after this, the clan and their new leader, Sir Ewan Du, Cameron of Lochiel abandoned the highly disputed Tor Castle in the 16th century. I mean, I can't really blame them. No. <laughs> Ewan Cameron of Lochiel, otherwise known as the Ulysses of the Highlands and latterly the Wolf of Lochaber. That's, yeah, a really cool name. It is a very cool name, I isn't don't it? know if it's any relation to the Wolf of Wall Street. But no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, anyway, the Wolf of Lochaber. Um, so according to legend, Ewan faced off with the last wolf in the British Isles and killed it with his sheer strength and ferocity. Wow, Ewan sounds like quite the guy. I know. Um, after this, Ewan united the clan under his leadership and wanted a more convenient house, which was further removed from their enemies, Clan Mackintosh, Clan Campbell and Oliver Cromwell's garrison at Inverlochy Castle. Um, which were all nearby Tor Castle. So it makes a lot of sense to move yeah, away from there, yeah, yeah. just keep out of trouble. Yeah, um, <laughs> they've had enough. <laughs> exactly. Um, and yeah, the clan, clan really did have an impressive number of enemies at this time. Uh, so They really yeah. did, didn't they? I know. I mean, I all for some sorry for them, yeah. yeah. Mm. Sir Ewan had a genius strategic mind and decided to build the new castle between Loch Lucky and Loch Arcaig. This position helped them end the 350-year war with the Macintoshes at the standoff at the Fords of Arcaig. Sir Ewan used the locks to their advantage and surprised the opposing forces. The two armies were prepared to face off with guns, bows and swords, but Ewan saw a separate solution and after a week's debate, a diplomatic resolution was found. Oh, wow, I mean, that's very rare. Them, yes. isn't it? Very mm. unscottish of them. Yes, I know, we like a battle. We do, yeah. Anyway, that sounds much more kind of helpful in the long run it than does, yeah. their previous battles didn't work. Yeah. Um, so the unification within the clan at this time can be seen in their clan crest as it features a sheaf of five arrows tied together pointing upwards. So the five arrows represent the unification of the five Cameron clans of Letterfinney, Glen Nervous, Callert, the Racked, and the Clunes. The five arrowed crest was engraved onto Gentle Lochiel's pistol in a silver snuff box, which date back to pre seventeen forty five and are still around today. So wow, that's cool. Some nice artifacts. Mm -hmm. um, prior to this, and also now used by the present Lochiel, the old Dexter arm crest carried the motto Pro Reg a Partia. Apologies, my Latin is not great. Um, but this translates um, as meaning for king and country. Sadly, not all Camerons were as strong-minded as Sir Ewan, as the original castle luck, castle's luck was about to end. The castle stood strong until one fateful day when Donald Cameron, otherwise known as the Gentle Lochiel, was planting trees on the banks of the River Archaig. He was interrupted by news that Bonnie Prince Charlie had landed on the shores of Scotland. From that day onwards, the castle that was described as being a generous house of feasting, where wine goes round freely, was doomed. Oh, that sounded quite good up until that. I know. <laughs> Donald initially refused to join Charles, but his brother convinced him to make a decision which proved to be a fateful day in the history of the Cameron clan. 
After the defeat at the Battle of Culloden, the Camerons retreated to the mountains and on May 28th, 1746, Donald watched as 320 men of Blight's regiment burned the great fur-planked old Aknacari to the ground. Oh, hmm. that's very sad, isn't it? I know. I suppose a good thing that they uh, did get out the way. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, in the years after the uprising, the gentle Lochio's descendants slowly made their way back to the UK after either escaping or being exiled to mainland Europe. Um, personally, being exiled to the sunny sound of France sounds quite nice to me. I mean, so, yeah, it does sound quite nice. Yeah, I mean, maybe not the way you'd want to go about it. Not but, really, no. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, for the next 50 years, anarchy... Um, Agni <laughs> Well, it does sound like there's a Yeah, it does. <laughs> anyway, for the next 50 years, Aknakari Castle was left in ruins until the gentle Lochio's grandson, Donald Cameron, saved the day. Uh, Donald and the distinguished architect James Gillespie built this new majestic mansion house for almost 30 years, hoping to return the clan to its previous glory. Mm. Wow, 30 years to build a house. It must have been quite thing. impressive, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's described as majestic. Well, so. yeah, that's true. Mm. From this castle, one of the British Army's more famous historic regiments, the Queen's Own Cameron Highlanders, were first brought into being with the onset of the Revolutionary Wars in France. The regiment was raised by Sir Alan Cameron of Iraq, who put so much stock in the fighting skills of the Highlanders that he refused a group of English riflemen from being admitted to the regiment. The Cameron Highlanders fought with distinction at the Battle of Waterloo and during the Crimean War, as well as the Indian Rebellion. In thanks for their distinguished service, Queen Victoria presented them with colours in 1873 and decreed that the regiment should henceforth be known as the Queen's Own. The regiment served in the First and Second World Wars and were the last regiment to wear kilts into battle giving rise to their nickname, the Ladies from Hell. The regiment was merged with the Seaforth Highlanders in 1961 to form the Queen's Own Highlanders. I think I've actually been to their barracks in Inverness. Yeah, well, that's yes. very cool. Did some training there. That's very day. cool. Um, anyway, so in the castle's later history, it was only used for wars of words instead of battles with swords. So wow. they obviously found the new diplomatic group to be beneficial. It sounds like it, yeah. As the new Aknakari Castle hosted the leaders of the free world oil industry in the 1920s. Interesting. That is interesting. For two weeks, the oil industry battled with rising prices of Russian oil until they reached what is now known as the... Aknakari agreement. If only the current chief could organise round two of that event. That would be very helpful, wouldn't it? Yeah. During World War II, the Camerons vacated Aknakari, handing it over to the British military, and for three years, as many as 25,000 Allied soldiers trained there. The castle became the commando training depot, which was used to train soldiers for landing behind enemy lines. If you're interested in this, the BBC have a great documentary on the Commando Castle, so you should definitely give it a watch. But despite this, the castle did not escape the war unharmed, as when the end of the war loomed, the castle was hit by a great fire, which left it with no roof. The castle was quickly rebuilt and still stands to this day and is a great visit for anyone interested in this fascinating clan. Now, on to our favourite thing here at Scotland Shop, Tartan. We have over 12 different variations of Cameron Clan Tartan coming in ancient, modern, weathered, hunting and dress. So, mm. Amy and I are wearing the Cameron Clan Modern yes. today. Yes. So, yeah, quite festive in the It is actually, yes. The holidays. It also features on the cover of our winter brochure this year, the Ooh. Cameron Clan Modern Tartan. There you go. Fun fact, people. Yeah. Um, so, I would say one of the more popular ones is actually the Cameron Hunting Ancient, which is this one, which has kind of a unique colour palette and looks really quite modern with its sort of lilacs and salmon pinks. So, mm -hmm. yeah, very popular one. Perfect for using at a wedding. Yes. If your colour palette, or your colour scheme, sorry, for your wedding is lilac or green or even pink. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, popular choice. Mm -hmm. um, as we discussed, we have the Cameron Clan Modern here with very vibrant red. And then 
obviously earlier we were discussing the sort of different branches of the Camerons who had come together. So one of these is the Cameron of Lochiel. Um, and I really like this one because I think personally I prefer the white to the yellow. Yeah. And then the navy just kind of... It just yeah. makes it feel a bit more fresh, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So quite a nice one there. Yeah, it's lovely. And then um, also the Cameron of Iraq, so the Cameron of Iraq modern that we've got here. So a bit more yeah. of a traditional tartan, isn't it? With I would say so. Greens and navies. Absolutely. So obviously if you're not too sure which specific branch of the Camerons that you come from, you maybe want to stick to sort of the ancient modern or hunting mm -hmm. um, variation. But if you know specifically which branch of Camerons you come from, then you might want to for one of those ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we often get asked what the difference uh, between the ancient and modern tartans are. So um, essentially the story goes that before the 1860s it would have been a um, more traditional dye, so vegetables and plants that they found in the region that the clan came from to sort of dye the yarn and create the, the beautiful tartans. Um, and then once um, the 1860s came, um, then chemical dyes were around, so it came out much more vibrantly. So I think some people preferred the softer colour palette, some preferred the new. So mm. yeah, decided to name them both variations and keep them both going. You obviously get a lot more um, control with the, the chemical dyes, so mm -hmm. you can recreate all of these different looks. And then you've obviously got the weathered colour palettes as well. So, What's your yeah. favourite? Oh, that's a difficult one. I think it really depends on the clan tartan because yeah, sometimes just the combination of colours I think look better. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, you can see them better with the ancient I think because yeah. there's a bit more contrast between them but then sometimes the moderns look really sort of just nice and bold. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, no no distinct answer there. No. <laughs> just you like depends them on all. the tartan. Yeah, you exactly. like all tartans. Love them all so yeah, much. we do. In the modern day, the clan have produced some of the most important people from all walks of life, from David Cameron to James Cameron, and all the great achievements from past and present are celebrated at the Clan Cameron Association. To learn more about the clan or to discover how to get involved, visit the official Clan Society website. The Clan Cameron Association was formed in 1889 thanks to the en endeavours of a number of enthusiastic Camerons who valued the clan and its links throughout the world. So, and if you want to get involved in the association, they actually meet up every year on the anniversary of the Battle of Culloden. What a nice little celebration of the clan. Exactly. I don't, not a nice anniversary. Not really, but, but it's nice for yes, them to all come exactly. together. There's even a Clan Cameron Museum in the Highlands of Scotland where you can find loads of different artefacts from throughout the years of the Camerons. Um, it's really, really interesting if you're interested in learning more about your Cameron history. Yes, we're hoping to go and pay it a visit sometime soon. Yeah, we so would like to, yeah. Stay tuned for another video as we tour the <laughs> museum. Yeah. And there we have it. We hope you've enjoyed learning about the Cameron family with us. Um, and if you'd like to test your knowledge with all of these newfound facts, keep a lookout for our Clan Cameron quiz coming soon. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, email newsletter and social media for more Clan content.